Hello, and hey, this is Zero Coke in Reviews, and today we'll be looking at the Flame Toys Furry Model Windblade. It is perhaps very fitting that this is my first Transformers review, although I'm gonna be honest, I don't know much about this character. I haven't gone through IDW Look on the mask of my boy. And right now, I don't feel like reading out her Transformers wiki page to give you the impression I know what I'm talking about. Because I don't. Based on my music choices, if you haven't caught on yet, I'm more intimate with the Japanese Transformers series. Which, considering this design, is a little bit ironic. Speaking of design, maybe Black Arachne accounts, but this probably isn't like how Skimpy Skyrim can be considered canon if you look at the older games. I do, however, find it absolutely wild that this is an officially licensed Hasbro product. I am grateful, though. It's uh, rather strange, but I actually remember the first time I saw these illustrations back in around 2015. At the time, I had never seen anything like this before, and for better or worse, it shaped the person I ended up becoming. Shinitai. Probably not. Regardless, Bon is an artist whose work I've enjoyed for the better half of a decade now, and yes, I do have one of their scale figures. In fact, I'm getting another one. That's a penis! We've done this joke already, go away. If you're familiar with Megami device and similar Mecha Musume kits, this is not like that. Although if you consider it one, this might actually be the best Mecha Musume kit. The construction is actually pretty interesting, although I didn't really record any of it, so uh... As long as you don't assemble it wrong, it's probably fine. And once it's assembled, I'm actually a bit surprised at how good this looks in person. Although, my surprise is probably due to how I thought it would look kind of shit. The promotional images didn't inspire much confidence, and even looking at it now, there's something a bit off about it. Particularly, the eyes. It might still be a sculpting issue, but I think the problem is, the piece for the eyes includes parts that aren't the eyes themselves. Also, since it's a different color and material to the face, it throws off the shape of the eyes by looking like it's part of the eyes. I, I think this is the first time a furry model had eyes like this. Interesting idea, but it's probably best to drop it moving forward. For the previous reason, but also because it doesn't look great in pictures. And while it does look quite nice in person because, wow, nice clear part. But that's only before you notice her eye detail, which is kind of cool, since it reflects a faint amount of light that's submerged by the clear plastic. But it also results in a soulless impression. Not like in the Yandere way, because, um, <laughs> I'm actually really into that. But more like just corpse eyes, lifelessly staring into the distance. Typically, Transformers not having light in their eyes means they're fucking dead. Bumblebee, I'm fucking dead. He's fucking dead. Or it means your figure has LEDs or light piping. This has neither and it's fucked. Speaking of things that are fucked, this is a model kit, which means you are limited by it having to be feasibly assembled by a person with the minimum requirement of a pair of nippers, which also limits the materials that can be used. It's probably why they have to use this fucking ugly bronze. But otherwise, I find the shapes here to be generally a... Uh, rather appealing, with mechanical detail doubling as anatomical detail, the balance between hard and robotic but also soft and charming shapes makes for a form that is fantastically realized. Except for this gap. In the fight between visuals and articulation, visuals kind of lost here, but considering this is a robot, it doesn't bother me as much as it would otherwise. However, it does mean the only poses that aren't hindered by this are ones like these. Which might not be a bad thing, but this gap is still bad. Generally, I think the stuff that doesn't quite work here is the result of design decisions rather than... Well, I guess I have to bring this up. Although I honestly don't quite understand the issue. I haven't really looked into it, uh... Basically, there was a bit of controversy leading to the design being altered. Some people are very mad about this, which personally, the thing here I'm the most upset about is that, uh... We get a fucking choice? Can I have a version of Revenge of the Fallen that's not disgusting and shit and ruined my fucking childhood? What I'm getting at is that I don't think the problems here stem from censorship, especially considering the altered concept is not that different. And the altered kit is probably even less different from the original prototype. The biggest difference here are these wings. The original is definitely a more interesting design that harkens back to traditional Japanese fashion, which is probably more fitting for the Geija thing they got going here. I also fucking hate it. Whereas I have nothing against these. 
if we move downward, it appears the ass was changed. Her ass is still fat, but it seems like it used to be deeper. It's a fucking D. Is the ass being deeper a good or bad thing? I am not an ass technician. I don't know. I do not understand the inner mechanics of the mathematical formulas in order to determine the appropriate depth of the ass in hand. I do think that this is probably a more practical ass, judging by its ability to maintain its shape despite the range of articulation it offers. So for me personally, this is the better ass. Because I don't know, this looks kind of wrong to me. Although that might just be because I fucking hate this pose. The only real bit of censorship is the crotch. I'm not too enamored by the addition of the trussy, aka Transformers pussy on the original designs. It's nice, but I'm okay with their removal. I imagine most Transformers default state is naked, except for maybe like Ultra Magnus. I'm not really sure what to take from this actually, but it's not something I really need represented visually. I would be okay with it if it was an option, but having it be the default would be kind of weird. So I consider it preferable that this is the only option. It's not like options are at all much of a presence with this. We'll get to the very minimal accessories later, but this is it. This bland, expressionless expression. There are no faceplates for this, which is fucking mind-boggling. What makes it even more disappointing is that it's a very prominent feature of the Kurokara Curry line, even when it's entirely unnecessary. You can argue that including an Orion Pax face or a brain head is cool, but not having them would be absolutely fine, whereas only having one face here is honestly pretty frustrating. Even I have more than one face. I should probably summarize. I am unapologetically horny, but I also really like cool robots. And I think this does manage both despite also being a bit jank. Oh my god, is that a slightly different camera angle? Yes, yes it is. I had to re-record this part because I forgot to put these on. Also, one of the lights is now purple because I didn't have any other ones. Anyway, let's fucking talk about articulation. I've always really liked the inclusion of a bend at the lower arm. It makes the more dynamic curved arm a choice that doesn't get in the way of articulation. On the other side of things, I get why the arm is like this, but also, what the fuck? I do find it rather unfortunate that a visually significant amount of the articulation breaks the sculpt. We talked about the legs already, and the articulation on the torso has pretty decent range, but is otherwise just odd. This might be because this is a model kit, or perhaps because the original version of the design didn't have this detail on the stomach, they tried to avoid putting a cut there. In a similar way, the new design might also allow for the waist articulation to be done how it's conventionally done. But I'm guessing they couldn't really change the initial prototype too much. Either way. With the Dark Advent kit, we witness a lack of restraint in the amount of accessories. Here, well, it's a very low bar, but I guess accessories are a little better than, say, a McFarlane figure. But I can't exactly call this open-handed. Although, I guess you do get open hands as your, uh, only other option. Oh cool, a sword. Oh cool, another sword. I don't know what to talk about here. While we're at it, let's not talk about the stand, because there isn't one. This is the second time I've done this joke, but it's the only reason I bought the Sentinel stand, and I'm gonna get my money's worth. Not coming with a stand isn't really a bad thing, although it would be nice if it accommodated stands. For example, having the wing thing open up so I can stick a stand into it. Because having a claw around a figure makes it look bad next to other figures. It's also just visually intrusive. Aqua, Mazinger, Gurmagan, Shin. I think that, ultimately, the end result here is quite attractive, but also pretty cool. It's a good mixture in my opinion, and down the line, if my reservations can be addressed, I would be able to easily recommend it to Bon enjoyers like myself. But as is, I guess I can recommend it if you like how it looks and don't mind the price. Otherwise, uh, no. That's about it. Thank you to the patrons. I gotta say, this guy is stupid as shit. Of course, thank you to Fall Night Reviews for their recording contributions, and I'll see y'all next time. Oh right, this doesn't transform. I really couldn't care less.